My name is Chai Williams, and today we're going to talk about linear mixed effect models with both a random y-intercept and a random slope. So we're going to have a repeated measures design with one factor in three levels. So we need three different distributions of data. So let's start off by making some data. So we need scores. We need three different distributions, and we're going to do this with the rnorm function as we usually do. So we have 50 people, and that's condition one. That's condition two. Let's make it 170 is the mean for condition three. So what we have is 50 people in each distribution or 50 data points. And then we have a mean of 100, 150, and then 170. And we have the same standard deviation of 20 for all of them. Now what we need to do is code our conditions. So conditions, we're gonna use the rep function. What we'll do is we'll put C minus one zero one, so we're gonna use orthogonal coding here. We're just gonna repeat that 50 times and we're gonna sort all of that. And what you'll see when we're there is that's just gonna give us negative one 50 times, then zero 50 times, then one 50 times. Just indicating our three different conditions. Next what we need is our subject IDs, which is gonna be just one to 50, because we have 50 people. Now if we run all of this, what we see is our scores on the left, we have our conditions of negative one, zero, and then one. And we have our participant ID. So we see that it restarts at each condition, which means that we have three different conditions for each person. Next, what we need is our LME4 package and then the LMER test. So let's get that. Let's make sure to run those. And then we could start building our model. So in a past video, I did this with only a y-intercept random effect and not a random slope effect. We could do that looking like this. We go LME results equals LMER. And we're gonna say our scores is our y variable, so our dependent variable. Our conditions is our x variable. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go plus and then in brackets, I'm going to go one vertical bar subject as our subject ID. And then we're going to go data equals reg data. And what we did here is this is a variable y-intercept, but not a variable slope. What that means is everyone has the exact same slope in this model, but where they start on the y-axis can change, and that's okay. But what if people move through these conditions in different ways. So if we're talking about learning at time one, two, and three, some people learn faster than others. So their slope's gonna be steeper than others. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually add a random slope in here to actually allow not only where they start on the y-intercept to change, but also to change their actual slope per person. So we're just gonna see, is there some sort of linear relationship while accommodating for individual differences? So here we only have a y-intercept random effect but we want to add a slope random effect as well. So the way we do that is we take our conditions and we add it in here. So we're going to just replace the one for conditions because the one's automatic anyway. So the one indicated that we have a Y intercept random effect, but now we have both a one, so we could write it like this as well. And the condition is also a random effect. It's a fixed effect here, but it's a random effect here, which means that we can do it across people. For simplicity, I'm going to remove this one and it will do the same thing. Then we can run this model. Again, I've created this data and so I'm not going to worry about these warning messages. Then we can look at this by going ANOVA LME results. And what we'll see is a very simple output with our condition main effect. So we get our sums of squared, our mean squared, our numerator degrees of freedom, our denominator degrees of freedom, our f value, and then finally our p value. So we can easily write this out in the following way. So we put our numerator degrees of freedom by our denominator degrees of freedom equals 267.27, so our f value, and then p is less than 0.0001 in this case because we have a very small p. 